Hello. We're, we're the after lunch show. So nobody's napping. Did anybody bring pillows? No? Good. So I know you're going to have a lot of questions for our three speakers this afternoon. Um, we're going to go on time, so I want to make sure that there's time for questions. I suspect that Kathleen Liu is going to have many questions. If you have a question, please put your hand up, and our folks here will try and help it. My name's Heather. I'm on the Open Street About Board, and I'm really honored to be here to have this conversation with you guys. Kathleen, over to you. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? All right, great. Uh, so for those of you who might have seen this talk at State of the Map US, uh, I did change the slides, uh, so you won't be completely bored. Uh, I did not change the jokes, so please still, you know, laugh again. Um, so my talk is about uh, the compatibility of data sets into OSM based on OSM's um, open database license. Uh, so, you know, this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the, the license, just to give you a quick overview of why we're, you know, dealing with the situation, um, what it is that the legal situation involving map data, um, but then we're going to go into sort of examples of uh, practical advice of how to find uh, licensed data, um, what to look for when you are looking at that license to see whether or not it's compatible with OSM, and uh, of course, sharing that information uh, with uh, the legal working group, um, which I am a member of, um, and with the community at large, so we all benefit from your research. Uh, so the disclaimer at the bottom here, this says, uh, this is a very long acronym. What it means is I am a lawyer, but I am not your lawyer. So this is not legal advice. This is just some things that, um, you know, I've learned a little bit over the years and as a member of the working group, we would like to see. Okay. So the uh, open database license, um, you can go and read it. Uh, it's kind of long. It's uh, kind of wordy. There's, uh, <laughs> it, it can be a, a bit of a headache to read. Um, but the key things you need to remember for purposes of when you want to import data or you want to trace data into OSM is uh, there is a share alike clause. Um, that means that whatever data you put into OSM needs to be sub licensable, so like licensed back out on terms that are compatible. So if you, the license that the data is under, if it can't go out as ODBL, then it's not compatible. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is uh, if you see, I know the text is probably very small, you probably can't actually read any of that, um, but there are already many, many, many data sets that have been imported into OSM. And what that means is, you know, we, OSM is attributing to these data sets, there's a web page, there's kind of a long list, there's a link, there's like even more lists, and of course you go into the change sets and there's, you know, details of every little, um, for every little bit of data that's added. That means that to the extent that a data set has an attribution requirement, it needs to be a flexible one. Um, and we'll talk more about what that means with some examples later. Okay, so map data. Um, in what the law that protects map data is very different jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So we're here in Germany, um, Europe, the uh, entire European Union has what is called a sui generis law for protecting databases. That means it is a law specific to databases. Um, it sets out you know exactly what kind of databases are protected, um, what uh, they're protected from, and how long they're protected. So that is different than copyright law. Uh, copyright law is, you know, generally, right, it's for things like books um, and movies, and the scope of copyright law tends to focus on creativity. Um, the, the thing about creativity is that databases tend to not be very creative. There is an argument about, 
you know, the selection of like what attributes you include in the database um, and you know how you list that information, that that might be creative. But a fact, like the fact that like this uh, building is at this location, there's nothing creative about that. Um, and so there is this inherent tension in map data uh, between you know, copyrightability um, and, and sort of the usefulness of that database. Um, there are two sort of competing theories of uh, copyright. One is called sweat of the brow, and it's sort of like the idea of like the more work that you have to put into something in order to create it. That um, is what makes it valuable and deserving of protection. Um, and then the, the other theory is sort of like, you know, copyright is designed to um, encourage creativity. So if there's nothing creative about it, if you are gathering facts that sort of exist out in the world, then, you know, maybe that's protectable by something, but it's not, co it's not copyrightable. It's not what copyright law is for. Um, so you have in a lot of countries where there is no sui generis database protection law, um, there's just no uh, copyright protection for facts at all. Um, so like the US is a good example of a jurisdiction that has a lot of law developed on the subject. Um, so whenever you are looking at a data set, um, keep in mind that what the law actually is differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. And a lot of people are imprecise with how they describe IP and how they describe licenses. Um, so, you know, go back to the source and look at what the license actually says, um, if there is a license. You know, it, it sometimes, you know, people will just like say that like they own something, right? Like people might um, have a public domain, um, like a good example is Shakespeare. So all of Shakespeare's works are in the public domain because he wrote them a long time ago and he died a long time ago. Um, but a publisher can still you know, take a play, um, you know, put a nice cover on it, write an introduction, a foreword, uh, maybe some footnotes, and then publish that book. And that book is owned by the publisher, but only the new parts that the publisher added. So they're still gonna write, you know, in the book, copyright, you know, big publisher, right? Um, and they're you know, not gonna tell you exactly like, you know, this is the, but you can figure it out. You can go and look, okay, well, this is the original Shakespeare. This is what's new. And you can just cut out all the new stuff, you know, toss that out. And then you have the public domain stuff that you can use. But, um, you know, OSM, it is, a global project. It's for use by everyone um, for a lot of different things. And so we have to take care of it by looking carefully at what's the data that we put into OSM because, you know, trying to take it back out, right, is a big pain. And also, you know, you might be causing trouble for other people who are using it. Um, so this is just a be careful. So the other area of law that affects uh, data sets and what you can import is contract law. So a contract is an agreement between you and maybe the person who gives you access to the data that you might do certain things or not do certain things. Um, and that agreement is sort of between those two people. Now, Sometimes you will not be allowed to have access to some data unless you agree to the contract, right? Um, and you can sort of make the choice of whether or not you want to agree it. Um, but just because uh, it, just because it is written that you know the condition for access is X doesn't mean that X applies to everyone in the world. It applies to everyone who accepts the condition. Right? If somebody does not accept that condition, then they're just, that whatever protection is, exists is governed by what we talked about previously, right? Copyright law or database protection law. Um, 
you know, sometimes you have to click on something or to access it, you know, make sure you read what it is that you're clicking on um, because sometimes that'll tell you whether or not uh, you can put it into OSM. But, you know, if you don't read, maybe, maybe you will get sued, maybe not. Probably not. Um, so in terms of practicalities of finding this information, right, you know, you might go onto a website, um, there might be like a link to some terms of service. A lot of times that's just about the website, it's not about the data, so you might have to like go find an FAQ just about the data. There might be like another page that says data license. Um, sometimes the da it's like on the page with the data, sometimes it's like in the download file. You just have to kind of click around um, and look for it. Um, and of course, uh, other mappers have done a lot of research, so um, past imports, um, but also um, sometimes uh, mappers have looked at something and said, you know, like this is probably not compatible because, you know, a, you know I found this in the license, um, and so it's not imported. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of places in the wiki that have um, historical information that can be very useful. Um, so this is a relatively new page that the uh, LWG has added um, where we uh, just looked at um, some different, uh, we sort of gather the information of historically what LWG has evaluated um, and put all that information onto a page. There's a lot of details um, into the reasoning of what, you know, what you know, the conditions are and why. This is just like a very general summary. Um, so I encourage you to, to look at that. Um, when you're looking at a license for data to see whether or not that is compatible with OSM, um, the main things that you should look at, um, these are the main things that you should look at. So as we talk about attribution, whether it's a flexible attribution, um, a lot of data might have like a non-commercial limitation. Um, and for OSM, uh, because you know, the, anybody can use OSM, right? Um, companies can use OSM, they can also resell that data if they want. Um, though you know, they need to link back to OSM so then you know, other people can go and download it for free if they want. Um, but you know, a non-commercial data set, that sort of limitation is not gonna be compatible. Um, there is, um, this is not super common, but sometimes, um, especially government data sets, they might have a requirement that you like, update the, to whatever their most recent um, update of that data is. And OSM, you know, we try to keep the map like with the freshest information possible, but we can't always promise to have the most recent um, information in there. So that sort of condition um, is not gonna work. Um, there is also sometimes, uh, some governments might put out data said like, this is for use within say Germany um, or within you know whatever country um, and OSM of course is a global project so the data needs to be usable in all countries. Uh, um, we can't have uh, data that uh, where the license says that it can be revoked at any time for any reason. Um, there are certain conditions where it's okay um, because, uh, you know, for example, like if you violate the license, right? Like that's a pretty common one. Um, it can be revoked if you violate. Um, there are also some privacy considerations. Um, sometimes, you know, the governments will say, well, if we accidentally release like a list of people's birthdays, we need to be able to, you know, cancel that. Um, fortunately, we don't map people's birthdays into the map. Uh, so that is something that, um, you know, you just have to look at exactly what 
that particular law um, license says. Um, but a lot of times that can be okay. Um, so indemnity clauses are when, uh, when a license will say, like, you promise that uh, if anybody were to sue us because of your usage of this data, uh, you will uh, pay, you know, to defend us, essentially. Uh, OSMF doesn't have any money. We can't afford to pay to defend anyone. <laughs> Um, so, unfortunately, we can't promise that. Um, Share-like clauses usually, in general, are just not compatible with each other. Um, so, uh, it's unfortunate, um, but each share-like license tends to be just written a little bit differently, and then when they each say, well, you know, everything has to be licensed under this license, and then this leather license is all it has to be under this license, even when they're both open licenses, they're almost never compatible. Um, so just to give you some examples of what I've talked about here. Um, so this is the UK's open government license. Uh, so this is version 3.0. Uh, so this is this part's nice and simple. This is uh, about what you can do the do with the data. So you can copy it, you can reuse it, you can specifically use it commercially um, and with other data. Um, so that's very nice. Um, this is sort of the big condition on it, right? Um, where you have to um, attribute. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it says that, you know, if you're using information from several information providers um, and listing multiple attributions is not practical, you can include a link. Uh, so, th so this is an example of a very clear, flexible attribution uh, requirement in a license, which is, which is nice. Um, so, this is a couple of examples of what I was saying about sort of like conditions, you know, privacy protective conditions. Um, trademark uh, is all often carved out in these licenses. That's fine. Um, you know, OSM is just going to sort of identify the source um, and not use um, the marks in a commercial manner. And uh, the, you know, no warranty, that's fine. You know, OSM is not going to go and sue some data source and say, like, you know, your data was bad. Um, so this is a previous example. Um, this is a, or this is the previous version of the Open Government License. This is version 1.0, which is not compatible with um, OSM, and because this. Um, previous version has this very specific attribution requirement. Um, and so the, it was decided that um, it was not flexible enough. And you can see one of the big differences that there's no mention of being able to use a link and such. Um, so another example is Canada. Uh, this is the uh, open government license, which is adapted from the uh, UK version. Um, one thing that's you know I want to point out um, is this definition of personal information, which is a reference to a section of a Canada federal law. So when you're looking at this, make sure to check what the license, it, you know, it might be pointing to something else. In this case, there's nothing in the Privacy Act that's concerning. Um, it's defining as sort of like what you would normally expect, you know, like birth dates and stuff like that. But you've got to follow up and go and actually find that section and read it. <laughs> To, to make sure that it's okay. Um, you know, so the, I won't read this whole thing, but if you're doing your research. Um, so, you know, here's an example where you gotta check where the data is coming from. So um, this is the uh, U United Nations Office um, for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, their field information services section. Um, so they have 
data uh, bases under a whole bunch of different types of licenses. Um, if you see, this one was listed as um, under ODBL, which is the same license that OSM is under. And um, it says, but it also says that uh, it's deprecated. Um, and, but then if you click on that link, you go to the updated data set, it actually says that the updated data set is public domain, which is even better. It's even more flexible and it can be used for anything. So when you are looking at these things, make sure that you check the source and make sure that you follow through and like look at everything to get the whole big picture. Um, here's another example also from that same um, web page. So this is um, administrative boundary data for Pakistan. Um, and it says here that it's for humanitarian use only. Now obviously OpenStreetMap is used for humanitarian uses, but it's also used for a lot of other things, um, including commercial uses. So, you know, to check this, you go to the Pakistani Census Office where it says the data is from. You know, they talk about um, their data and they talk about a why. Um, they, they think about how, like, you know, they will sell the data, um, but, you know, if you get the data, you can't give it to anybody else. Um, and it explains that, you know, they are sort of charging different prices to different people um, because of how much it costs the government to obtain that data. Um, but as you can see, they will give it to certain uh, agencies, including the United Nations, uh, for free. Um, so I've been given the signal, I have to talk faster. <laughs> So if you, if you find some data you don't know what the license is, um, you can ask the, the source. Um, but don't ask them, you know, is this compatible with ODBL? Because a lot of people don't know what ODBL is. Um, and don't ask them if the data is open because people have different understandings of what open data is. Some people think if it's online, if you can see it, it's open. And other people think it's not open unless there are like no conditions at all. Right, so don't leave that open to your interpretation. Be really specific. You know, ask, you know, find out, you know, the things that are important to find out are things like, is it the government's data or does it actually belong to a third party and the government can't even give the permission? Um, what are the restrictions on it? You know, ask about that. Um, if it's public domain, that's very helpful to know. But if it's not, you know, what are the li what's the license? And if there is a potential conflict with ODBL, then ask for a waiver. Um, so this is actually a really nice example um, that from Australia, um, and thanks to Andrew Harvey for pointing this out to me, where they, they actually wrote into the contract with their imagery. Uh, they would hire someone to go out and take imagery of the area. They actually wrote into it, you know, we, we work with OSM and this needs to be able to go back into OSM. And so to the extent that there is a conflict with CC BY, which is the normal license that we're gonna put this out under, um, you acknowledge that that conflict is waived. Um, and there is an example of a CC BY waiver template um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the block. Um, and then last, uh, make sure that um, when you uh, do all this research and do all this work, that you put it back somewhere that other people can find it. You know, um, put it up on the wiki, include all the information, include all the links. Like when you tell people, like point to the specific sections of the license. Don't just link to the license and say, here's the license. You know, quote it, um, to, you know, point to the right number. And then make sure you include the document waivers as well. And uh, I'm just gonna, there's a, these slides will be up, so if you need to look at any of these links. Sorry. Don't be sorry, Kathleen, you're a lawyer, you're detail-oriented, we need that. <laughs> truly, truly, so thanks, Kathleen. I think, I know you're gonna have a lot of questions. Um, and Kathleen's here, but I see that Simon's here. Who else is here from the Legal Working Group? 
Is there anybody else? I, I think it's just me and Simon. Okay. Um, when you get a chance, I know you're going to have a lot of questions. Um, these are some resources who've been incredible and for I what think, they do for us. I think there's a working group meeting this afternoon, so if you have questions for yeah. Simon and I, come find us um, at, I think, 4, no, 4.30. After the break. <laughs> so after the break, with all your legal questions, take a number. <laughs> anyway, thank you again, Kathleen.